All right, joining me once again here on The Matthew Filipovich Show is Jessica Luther. Jessica is a journalist whose work has been seen in The Atlantic, The Guardian, Salon, RH Reality Check, and more, all of which you can find at jessicawluther.com. You can also follow her on Twitter at SCATX. Jessica, thank you so much for being on the show again. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, so Jessica, the last couple of weeks have brought to the forefront a lot of the really, really dark and miserable side of sports. Um, you've been covering this a good deal. This, uh, you know, you're someone who likes sports a lot. Yeah. Uh, but but it's just it, it's the last few weeks. The the ugly side has just bubbled to the surface. You actually wrote a piece for Bitch Magazine about what we need to do to make the NFL take domestic violence more seriously. Tell us about it. Yeah. Sure. Um, it has been quite the week, couple weeks here. Um, yeah. yeah, one of the things about taking the and getting the NFL to take anything seriously, I think, is really confronting the fact that the NFL exists to make money, and they're really, really good at it. And so, I often feel um, whenever I sort of I crowdsource, sort of, what should we do to make the NFL care? People are like, well, they should have to do education around this, or they should have to do this, or have to do that. And I am always, I always respond with, well, how do we make them do anything? And I think that's really the big question. And um, the more that I look at, I mean, I'm I mainly study college football and sort of issues around that. Um, right. But when I look at these issues and I think, how do we actually change it? I, my first answer is always like, we have to go after them financially. Like, that's the point of the NFL, right? Um, yeah. Is to make money. And I think one thing that we, I mean, and I sort of say this um, sarcastically or with hyperbole, but the NFL actually um, functions as a nonprofit. It, it's some kind of, it has a special designation. It's not technically a nonprofit, but it operates under the same um, tax loops or incentives, I guess, that nonprofits get. Um, yeah. And they, the NFL has worked for decades to maintain this, like back in the 1960s, really, you know, um, they knew what they were doing as far as getting this nonprofit status, even though they are the most profitable sports league in the world. Um, and so one of the suggestions I made in the piece was that we write our legislators and tell them that the NFL to like basically hold that nonprofit status hostage um, and attach to it sort of our list of demands, right? So if the list would be, I mean, I think it was two weeks ago now. It's hard to remember. Uh, the NFL, in response to the Ray Rice uh, controversy of the two-game suspension, the initial two-game suspension before the video came out uh, right. last week, um, released this letter that Goodell you know, wrote or at least signed, and it was in his voice. And it, um, you know, talked about sort of harsher penalties that the NFL will do moving forward for players um, who are accused or, I guess, convicted or however they want to think about it, whenever they get in trouble for it, um, for domestic violence or sexual assault. Um, But a lot of the letter was uh, preventative, sort of proactive measures that the NFL would take, um, including a bunch of different sort of education around the issue, um, how much they would do, taking that out into the community, sort of making it a bigger thing than, than, than just NFL. And that was, as for someone who works on this, I always think education is more useful than um, punitive stuff. Like it's sure. that preventing it is going to actually change things instead of um, trying to punish after the fact and make it a deterrent. But I... And so, like, holding the NFL nonprofit status hostage and require that the league make these teams do the things that it suggested that they do in this letter that the NFL wrote, you know, just a week or so before the now famous video was released. Um, Because I've not, I'm just not convinced that the NFL is going to do anything that it doesn't think will, uh, unless it thinks its bottom line will be affected. Right. Well, you also write that one of the a, a major problem, and, and there's a lot of problems when it comes to the NFL. Um, mainly that it is this giant gazillion dollar juggernaut, juggernaut that just like keeps rolling and rolling. Mm-hmm. Um, is that the 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 amount of actual women that the NFL employs is actually shockingly small? Yeah, I and I don't really have hard numbers on this, but um, it's pretty clear that from the top down, there just aren't a lot of women (laughs) involved in the NFL. Uh, And this is true for most major sports. Um, 
this is true on the college level as well as on the professional. And and this is true in sports media as well. And of course, I'm a, in sports media. So um, I think that if we really want to fundamentally alter the culture around this, like more women just have to be involved. And like one of the great things about that Goodell letter, whether or not we think it's just him blowing hot air about domestic violence and what they're going to do is that the people he reached out to, at least according to Peter King of Sports Illustrated, were a bunch of women who run organizations that work to end domestic violence or to make, um, to lessen it, I guess, um, to prevent it. So, I mean, that's what it's going to take, right? Um, except right now, if the NFL wants to do that, they do have to go outside of themselves um, in order to do that. And and one of the things I like, I think about a lot is the Ravens' response to what happened to Ray Rice, or not what happened to him, but what he did, um, was horrible. Like, it was this yeah. horrible, he's a really nice guy. We shouldn't, we support him. I mean, they, at some point, they... Um, tweeted out an article that said they aggressively supported Ray Rice and like quoted that line in the tweet. They're like, we aggressively yeah. are supporting him. Um, they had that horrible press conference where they tweeted out that Rice's um, wife was sorry for her role and what it had what had happened. They just did a really yeah. bad. Um, they did a really bad job, and I. And I just have to wonder, like, what that would have looked like if there had been women, just a bunch more women involved in sort of the Ray or the Ravens administration from the top down, women involved on the coaching staff, women in the locker room as they're having discussions about this, women on the media team. Um, I think, you know, it's good that if there's any woman anywhere, but at the same time, you know, um, it. It's kind of it has to sort of be a big shift because as anyone knows who has ever been in the position as being like the woman or like the <laughs> minority amongst um, the rest, like right. you're going to be really nervous about saying how you actually feel about anything. Like it does take sort of numbers in order to make people feel safe in, in voicing dissent within a group. Um, so I would love to see just so many more women hired and just considered a normal part of that conversation around whatever issues. Like I just think um, things are always better when things are more diverse. Um, but imagine that. Yeah, I know. Wow. <laughs> um, but I do. And I do think this matters a lot in sports media. Like I, I think, you know, we sort of, one of the great things that I was really happy to see was when their initial two game suspension for Ray Rice came down, um, sports media generally across the board panned the NFL and they went after Goodell and it was sort of amazing to see, I mean, there was obviously a lot of just general fan, um, anger over the suspension, yeah. but the media too, um, cause as we've seen in the last week with the release of the new video and like, did the NFL have it? And, did Goodell mess up and should he be fired? There are so many people in the sports media who are willing to sort of toe the NFL line and just say whatever the NFL wants them to. So people reporting on this video that we now know exists, reporting on it in June, are now like, did the NFL see it? And it's like, dude, you reported on it in June. <laughs> right. um, and so, you know, it's like, it was, so it was really great to see people who normally toe the line be really sort of like, this is not okay. Like yeah. this two game suspension, is, suspension isn't okay. And that had an effect. Like Goodell apologized. He released a letter, right? Like there was some sort of shift. Um, I feel like we need a better sports media. We need more women involved. We need more people who are able to sort of criticize the, the standard um, in a way that's sustained and across time, um, if we really do expect change, um, fundamental change. And so, again, just more women, just more people who um, are sensitive to sort of the, lar like, the larger issues that come out of sports, right? 